There are three ways that heat or thermal energy can be transferred, moved between places or objects. The terms heat and thermal energy essentially mean the same thing, although we should really use thermal energy when talking about energy stored in an object and heat when it's being transferred. Particles that are hotter have more thermal energy, they vibrate or move faster. The amount of thermal energy an object has depends on both its temperature, which tells you how much energy each particle has, and how many particles there are in said object. So a warm bath will have more thermal energy than a freshly brewed cuppa, even though the tea is at a hotter temperature. The particles in the bath each have slightly less energy, but there's way more of them. Conduction is the passing on of these vibrations from one particle to the next. This happens in solids. We say the particles vibrate about fixed positions. If you hold a metal rod in a Bunsen flame, you'll soon know about it. Why? It's not that the particles have moved from one end to the other. No, it's the fact that the metal particles in the flame get hotter, they vibrate more, and then pass on these vibrations down the rod, which ultimately reach your hand. Convection happens in fluids, that is, gases and liquids. Their particles don't need to pass on vibrations, as they're free to move. If you put a beaker of water on a Bunsen burner, the water at the bottom will get hotter. This actually causes the particles to move apart slightly, such that the water becomes less dense, becomes slightly lighter. It therefore rises upwards, while colder water from the top moves down to take its place, which in turn is heated, and so on. This cycle is called a convection current. This also happens when a radiator heats a room up, for example. The air next to the radiator is heated by conduction, and then it rises with colder air taking its place. That's why I think they should really be called convectors instead of radiators. Well, okay, they do do a bit of radiation too. The term radiation generally means anything that's emitted, given off by an object. But in this context of heat transfer, we're not talking about alpha, beta or gamma, but a specific part of the EM electromagnetic spectrum infrared radiation. These EM waves can be absorbed by most particles, giving them energy. If you put your hand near a radiator or a flame, you'll feel the heat. That's not conduction or convection though, as it's transferred too quickly for it to be either of those. This type of transfer happens at the speed of light, literally. That's how the sun is able to provide much needed heat for the earth. After all, there aren't any particles in space for it to be done by conduction or convection, are there? You probably know that the worst thing to wear on a hot day is black. Why is that? It's because darker materials absorb infrared radiation far better than lighter ones. If you think about it, that makes sense as it's true for light as well. Conversely, shiny, reflective materials are the worst absorbers of infrared radiation. You can wrap boiling tubes with a thermometer and a bung in these different materials and put them under an infrared lamp to prove this. What you might not know, however, is that black materials are also the best emitters of infrared radiation too. If you have what we call a Leslie cube, we fill it with hot water, you'll find that if you point an infrared thermometer at the different sides, the matte, meaning not shiny, black side appears the hottest. It's emitting the most infrared. The shiny metallic side will appear the coolest. It's the worst as emitting infrared. So technically, if you want to get the most out of your radiators at home, paint them black. Maybe not, unless you're really committed to an emo aesthetic. But you could just instead make sure that your house is well insulated to reduce heat loss by all three types of heat transfer. To reduce heat loss to the surroundings by conduction, you can have double glazed windows which have a gap between the two bits of glass so vibrations aren't passed on so easily. Ideally, this will be a vacuum between. Cavity walls work in a similar way. Heat can be lost due to convection thanks to any gaps in doors and windows which you'll want to block so hotter air can't get out and colder air can't get in. Also, convection currents in your loft are a biggie. Air heated by the ceiling rises up to heat the roof, then the surroundings. Insulation, however, massively reduces this flow of air. You can also fill your cavity walls with foam to stop convection currents circulating inside them. Heat can also be lost by radiation out of windows. Light goes through them, and so does infrared. If you have nice thick curtains, though, they'll absorb this infrared before it can reach the windows. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, leave a like and a comment. And check out my channel for videos covering whole papers to help you prepare for your exams. See you next time.